you had the handling of this lady's affairs. Now, did you at any time convert to your own use the securities that you have? Whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, Mr. Bowl, before you answer. Because you see, there are two points of view. Either we feature your probity and your honesty, or if you swindled the woman in any way, then we must take the line that you had no motive for murder since you had already a very profitable source of income. As you can see, there are uh, advantages to either point of view. But what I want is the truth. You may take your time if you like to reply. I assure you, Sir Wilfred, I have played, played dead straight. You won't find anything to the contrary. Dead straight. Thank you, Mr. Bowl. I appreciate that you're easing my mind. And I pay you the compliment to, in saying that you are far too intelligent to lie over such a vital matter. And now we come to the night of October the uh, uh, 14th. Now, did Miss French ask you to go and see her that night? No, uh, as a matter of fact, she didn't. Uh, but I'd come across a new kind of gadget, and I thought she'd like it. So I slipped up there that evening about quarter to eight. Uh, I knew it was Janet McKenzie's night out, and I knew she'd be alone, and it might be rather lonely. <laughs> you knew it was Janet McKenzie's night out? You knew that fact? Yes, I, I knew Janet always went out on Friday. That's not quite so good. Why not? It, it seems very natural I should choose that evening to go see her. Please go on, Mr. Bowl. Well, like I said, I got there at about the quarter to eight. Uh, she had already finished her supper, uh, but we had a cup of coffee and played a game of Double Demon. Uh, then at 9 o'clock, I said good night and went home. Now, you told me the housekeeper said that she came home that evening earlier than usual. Uh, yes, the, the police said that uh, Janet had come back for something she'd forgotten. And she heard, or she says she heard, somebody talking with Miss French. Well, whoever it was, it, it wasn't me. And can you prove that, Mr. Bowl? Of course I can. I was already at home with my wife by then. That's what the police kept asking me. Where was I at 9.30? I mean, on, on some evenings, uh, one wouldn't know where one was. As it happens, I remember quite clearly. I had gone straight home to Romania. We hadn't gone out again. And you live in a flat? Yes. We've got a tiny masonette over a shop behind Houston Station. Did anybody see you returning to that flat? Well, I don't suppose so. Why should they? There might be an advantage if they had. <laughs> but surely you don't think, I mean, if she were really murdered at half past nine, my wife's evidence is all I need, isn't it? And your wife will say definitely that you were home with that. Of course she will. Now, you're very fond of your wife, and, and your wife's very fond of you. Romaine is absolutely devoted to you. A man could not have a more devoted wife. Yes, I see. So you are happily married. Couldn't be happier. Uh, Romaine is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I, I'd like you to know her, Mr. Mayhew. Here. Come in. The evening paper, Sir Wilfred? Oh, thank you, Greg. Yes. Would you like a cup of tea, sir? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, Mr. Bowl, would you like a cup of tea? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you, Greg. I think it would be advisable for us to have a meeting with your wife. You mean have a, uh, a regular round table conference, huh? I wonder, Mr. Bowl, if you were taking this business quite seriously enough. I, I am. Really, I am. It, but it all seems so much like a bad dream that this should be happening to me. Murder. It's the kind of thing you read about in books or, or newspapers, but you can't believe it could ever happen to you or touch you in any way. I suppose that's why I keep trying to make a joke out of it, but it's not a joke, really. No, I'm, a, I'm afraid it's not a joke. But, I mean, it's all right, isn't it? Because if they really think she were murdered at half past nine and I were at home with Romaine. Uh, Mr. Bowles. The evidence of a devoted wife without any further supporting evidence may not be completely convincing. You mean they'll think that Romaine would lie on my account? It has been known, Mr. Bowen. <laughs> I'm sure she would, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, only in this case, she wouldn't be telling a lie. I mean, it really is so. You do believe me, don't you?
consciousness. Yes, I believe you, but it's not me you'll have to convince. Are you aware that, uh, you are aware, are you not, that Miss French left a will leaving you all of her money? Left all her money? T -t to me? You're joking. No, I'm not joking. It's in tonight's evening paper. She never said a word. You're sure of that, Mr. Bowl? Absolutely <coughs> sure. I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful to her, yet, in a way, I, I would rather wish now that she had <laughs> It is a bit unfortunate as things stand, isn't it, sir? It supplies you with a very adequate motive. That is, if you knew about it, but of course you'd say you didn't. Miss French never talked to you about <laughs> making a will. Well, she said to Janet once, you're afraid I shall make my will again. But that was nothing to do with me. That was just a bit of dust up between them. Do you, do you really think they're going to arrest me? I think you should prepare yourself for that eventuality, Mr. Paul. You, uh, you will do the best that you can for me, won't you, sir? You may rest assured that I will do everything in my power, Mr. Paul, to help you. Don't worry, leave everything in my hands. And you'll look after Romaine, won't you? She'll be in an awful state. It'll be terrible for her. Don't worry, young man. Don't worry. Then there's the money side that worries me, too. Now, I've got a few quid, but it's not much. Perhaps I, I shouldn't have asked you to do anything for me. I'm sure we can put up adequate defense in the court that provides in these cases, you know? I... I, I can't believe it. I, I can't believe it. I, Leonard Bolt, may be standing in a dock, saying not guilty, people staring at me. Now, I don't see why they don't think it was a burglary. The window was forced and smashed, and things were strewn all over the place, so the paper said it. It seems so much more probable. The police must have a very good reason for not thinking that it was a burglary. Well, it seems to me if they just look at the... Yes, Bob. Excuse me, sir. Well, for there's two gentlemen here that would like to see Mr. Vole. The police? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, John. I'll go and talk to them. God, is this it? Yes, I'm afraid it may be, my bad. Now, take it easy. <coughs> Don't lose heart. Give no further statements. Leave it all to us. But how do they know I'm here? <coughs> oh, look, they've had a man watching you. And they, they really do suspect you. Sorry to trouble you, Sir Wilbur. This is Mr. Bowl. <coughs> is your name Larry Bowl? Yes. I have given a warrant for your arrest on the charge of murdering Emily French on October 14th last. I must warn you that anything you say will be taken down and used in evidence. Okay. I I'm ready. Uh, good afternoon, Inspector Hearn. I'm uh, Mr. Mayhew, and I'm representing uh, Mr. Bowl. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Mayhew. But that's quite all right. We'll take him along and charge him now. Very seasonal weather we've been having just now. Quite an April frost last night. Welcome to see you later, I expect. I hope I haven't inconvenienced you, Sir Wilfred. I have never inconvenienced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I must say, John, that young man is in a worse mess than he thinks. Well, he certainly is. How does he strike you? Extraordinarily naive. Yet in some ways quite shrewd. Intelligent, I should say, but he certainly doesn't realize the danger of his position. Do you think he did it? I have no idea. But on the whole, I should say not. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Huh. Yes. Well, he's impressed us both favorably. I can't think why. I have never heard of a weaker story. God knows what we'll do with it. I mean, the only evidence in his favor seems to be his wife's. And who's going to believe a wife? <laughs> it has been known to happen. She's a foreigner, too. Nine out of twelve in the jury box believes a foreigner's lying anyway. <laughs> She'll be emotional and upset. She won't understand what the prosecuting counsel says to her. Still will have to interview her. Oh, you'll see, John. She'll have hysterics all over my chambers. <laughs> Perhaps you prefer not to accept the brief. Who says I won't accept it? Just because I pointed out that that young man...